G'day guys, Glenn here. We're still reeling about the visitor we had here yesterday. A thousand race starts, over 200 wins, and over 100 pole positions. Mate, John Bauer, he's a legend. Thank you, mate. Thanks for the invitation. Thanks for turning up and have a look at our little museum here. What a fantastic, honestly, it is the best museum I've ever been to, I think. Well, one of the things I was going to ask you, you've obviously seen lots of different museums around the place, mm -hmm. and this is only a new one as far as museums go, yep. and uh, it's set out differently to normal ones, or...? Well, I've been, I haven't been to the, the Peterson one in America, but I, I've been to some in Europe, and, I mean, this is better because it's got such a diverse range of cars you know yeah it doesn't yeah. matter what you're interested in yeah for sure there's something here the that, that would I've, incite excite you, you yeah. Know? yeah the biggest thing i felt when i get in the place is is all the memories because as you said the diverse type of cars here you've got a memory with every aisle you walk up and you can relate to so many different things <laughs> yeah unfortunately that's the truth yeah. yeah was there an area that you gravitated more to certain other areas like you know the, like the european cars or the australian well, cars or i grew up in a in a a Holden family, fun, which is funny because I now have quite a, an involvement with Ford products. The, yeah. the reason we're here is with Sinclair Ford. But my love is of European cars, really. Like I love European yeah, well, cars. Yeah. And uh, the funny, uh, down the back there's a little Volkswagen small window Beetle. Yep. Yeah, well, that was one of my first cars. Is so, that right? So I, yep. And I had some very funny times in that because I was 15. I used to take our girls in it. So. One thing I love they is... They didn't know I was 15. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I love is you, you often see people just standing and, and staring and it's almost as if they're going down memory lane, standing in front of their cars, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Like, quite a, I've owned quite a few Porsches in my life and there's lots of Porsches here that I, that I wished I hadn't have sold. And, yeah, uh, you know, yeah. it, it's great. But also the Ferraris and the... I mean, there's all these French cars. It's yeah. incredible. I mean, I don't know where they all come from. I have to ask for, for the museum's sake, have you got a favourite car here? The the Porsche Carrera GT, I think, is probably the car I would enjoy driving and owning most. Yeah, you know, I right. think they're a fabulous yeah, car. Yeah. But there's too many to pick, really, isn't it? For sure. Is there a type of car that you've always wanted to have a crack at? You, ha you haven't got a chance to sit in one yet? or? Um, I've driven most cars, honestly, I, because of my involvement with unique cars I, mm -hmm. I get to drive lots of different cars uh, I've never driven a Bugatti though but I, I mean I can because I know people that have got them yep but I haven't got around to it yet yep. um, no not really you know yeah. I mean I, I just like driving Being all lucky sorts. enough to give them a go yeah most of them and I mean yeah. I, I, uh, I've driven big American cars I've driven European old new driven them Bentleys and all sorts of things so yeah right. they all have their things you know they all have their uh, the interesting part about some of the cars here, not all of them are exotics and not all of them are worth yeah. hundreds of thousands yeah. of dollars and you can yeah. get as much pleasure out of a, a $15,000 car as you can out of a For sure. $15 For million sure. dollar car, to be honest. Yeah. So it's a, it's a big world, the car world. Well, one thing I was going to say is about yeah, you've been a professional racing car driver, you're surrounded by ballistic cars on a regular basis, but it's these daily drivers that also, that we see in the backgrounds here, the old Holdens, the old Fords, yeah, yeah. they're wonderful to just go and see. Yeah, they are, aren't they? I like some of the old Holdens, particularly. My nana had an early model, uh, you know, 48, 215, when I was yep. a very small kid, and uh, my mum had an FJ later on. I used to drive up our normal domestic driveway, which is normal, yep. normal size block, in my mum's FJ when I was a little boy, and I'd changed from first to second to third, all, all in the <laughs> all in the space of the driveway. So I obviously had the madness early. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Now I've got to ask a couple of racing questions, oh. all right? Because get a, a few mates off my back and, and a few people here. Now I've got to touch on a few weeks ago at yeah. Winton, yeah. mate. I watched the video you posted on Facebook of the. Um, Last position to first position. Oh, that one in oh, car yeah, 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 video. Yeah. I had to watch it twice. I thought you were going to watch the crash. So well, talk I'll talk about it about a minute, but first I got of all, the broken the, ribs one. to show for that. Yes, I can't believe. I mean, I've been lucky enough to actually been in a Toronto around Emory Raceway, <laughs> and they are a car to really muscle around. They, they don't drive easily. Oh, these these ones are good. These these are better than they ever were. It is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, no, it's a, there's a, there's a few of them in the category now, and I mean, people quite often ask me. Is the Toronto the car to have? I mean, it's not, but it, 
a Tirana was a good car in its day. Yep. And it's still a good car. And a, and a 69 Mustang was a good car in its day. Yep. Consequently, it still makes a good Touring Car Masters car. And the same for, you know, XB, XC Coupes and things yep. like that. If they were good in their day, they have obviously got the basis for being a good race for car. Sure. But we have better scientific brakes. They're not great big brakes, but we have better shock absorbers. We have lots of better stuff than they had. Yeah. You know, I'd love to have a car like I've got and uh, race it at Bathurst in 1975 oh, or something. Of course. Would, would, have by, <laughs> would have won by 30 laps. But the, the, t- the behind the scenes of all this is definitely the crew. Yes, yes. The crew course. is like, like an unsung hero. I know when I was involved with racing in quite a few different categories, the, the race day is the icing on the cake. Yeah, no, that's, that's, the, that's the, All the work that happens in the workshop and what happens there. Mate, you must have had some terrific crews over the time. Yes, I have, yeah. You, you know, I mean, the drivers, it doesn't matter what category you're in, the driver always gets the accolade. But, but without the people behind the scenes, and this can be in V8 supercars, Formula One, whatever, yeah. the driver doesn't get to do anything. So over the years, I can track my success by... <laughs> which goes up and down yeah. by the people that are, were around me, you know, and when you've yeah, got good right. people around you, you, it's much easier to have success. Yep. So at times, even the 11 years I spent with Dick Johnson's team, the, the, you know, changing staff and changing circumstances and things, but when we had the best tight-knit, dedicated group of people is when we went the best. Yeah. And you'd lose a couple of key people and you wouldn't go quite as well and you'd be struggling in certain areas. So very much a people business and you, mm. you you know you need to look after the people that look after you for sure now also winton on the same weekend race two didn't have the same outcome as race <laughs> one <laughs> no. and no. uh you've been pretty lucky with injuries as far as time goes but this yeah. time you sort of you caught the rough end of the stick i caught the rough end of the seat yeah no, I, I was uh, i was involved in an accident as people would know and uh, unfortunately i got sort of t-boned into the fence and it must have just been a a weird angle that the car went in at and it, right. it, it broke through my ribs down the left hand side yeah, right. so if you look at any of the in-car stuff it's quite funny because I offer, I offer a few expletives and judgments about <laughs> some of the other drivers yes. which I don't take back <laughs> yes. sometimes people deserve it yeah, they, um, on that one they do. now the next thing we want to know about is, of course is the Tirana yeah. how much damage was done to that and, and what sort of condition it is now I mean well, it's nearly fixed. It's going to be, hopefully, it'll, it, this time next week, it'll be well on the way to Darwin. So it had front chassis rails, which, which they're relatively soft in, the, the same with HQs. They, they've got long, skinny chassis rails. Yeah. They were all bent, so they had to be pulled straight. Front suspension, both sides, top and bottom arms, because they're all custom-made things. So they were both, both sides were damaged. The steering rack was damaged the rear watts linkage frame was damaged and then all the outside body work yeah, okay. you know the, the we just converted it to an a9x so we yeah, put right. a different bonnet scoop different guards different and put the flares on yes so we don't need just done that just it was just spent 15 grand on it now mm. it's all all uh, wrecked so that's all had to be replaced so it's been a, a bit of a you know it's not the end of the world but it's not an easy when you're running you know a limited budget you don't get millions of dollars for sure like supercars do for sure and uh so it's yeah. coming out of someone's pocket yeah it's coming out of mine, <laughs> mine. There you go. There you go. <laughs> and i'm not happy about it <laughs> one thing another thing I'd, I'd like to know about is i've got to read this out because i can't remember these details your diverse driving abilities you go from wrangling a 360 ferrari gt Back to a BA Falcon, then to a Lamborghini Gallardo GT3, then onto a Chev Camaro. All at the same time, yeah. you must be so lucky that Western Star didn't ring you up and ask you to drive as well. I couldn't. They wouldn't have trust me with anything bigger than a one tonner. Because I, I'd run over somebody. If I, <laughs> I, I had a, a, a little Toyota truck when I had open wheelers in the 80s, and I stayed at a, ho- a motel in Sydney racing at Oran Park. And, and it had one of those loot and bodies on the back. Yeah. When I left on Monday morning, I took, I knocked down the bloody <laughs> the, the awning, so I wouldn't trust myself. The driver. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I guess in my early years, you you used to try and drive as much stuff as you could. So 
I think, you know, your versatility comes from, firstly, whether you, you love it, which I do, yeah. and uh, secondly, you know, with the experience, you just get lots of experience, and I'd never think about it too much. I can drive most cars. I haven't come across one that I can't drive yet. Yeah, so, right. so, yeah. so it's just, I guess I'm lucky in some ways. Um, now, another thing I'd like to talk about, which is, which is close to me, mm -hmm. is, um, is about the black dog and the depression. Mm -hmm. um, you've had a bit of a, a bout and a bit of a run through the years. Yes. It come yes. to a big grinding halt for you. I had a, a similar thing happen to me, where, where yeah. my life come to a, yeah. a big grinding halt in a yeah. short time. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's something you can't explain. It's something you, you can't explain to people the, how much it really affects you. No. And it takes a fair bit to turn around. Yeah, it does, yeah. I mean, it's... It's different for a lot of us, a lot of people. A lot of people suffer from it. Uh, men more so than women, but it's not, you know, women aren't immune f from uh, depression, anxiety and mental illness. But, you know, to be able to try and help and do something about it, which we try and do in, in a small way, uh, is, is self-satisfying. It's nice to do. Um, for m in my case, depression is never that far away, you know. it's just under the surface so if I can operate above the yeah the cold yeah. room it's good for me yeah, yeah. and uh, it's, but it's constant not, maintenance it's, yeah yeah it is but it's not it's a terrible thing to go through and, and for anybody that is uh, you know suffering from any sort of mental illness I, I feel for them very much and we also promote to um, to if you feel you're that way to actually go and do something about mm. it because for most people it mm. is approachable and it is it is maintainable yeah. with the right te team around you. And it's hard to get the right team around you at times as well. well Family is number one important. Absolutely. But I mean, you need to go and see your doctor first of all. The, the, the thing is, which I did in, in early times, is I, you ignore it and ignore it at your own of peril. Course. It gets worse and you, you get into a spiral of, you know, where you, don't, you can't see any end to it. So the best thing to do is go and see your doctor and then from there you, you go to various various actions to take but the first thing to do is to go and see a GP so yeah. anybody that and, and you know there is a bit of a stigma there seems to be about particularly blokes talking about it but it's no there's no disgrace it's not it's a in depression's case it's it's the brain chemicals get out of whack so yeah. you know there's lots of different mental illness but in my case it was depression yeah. so yeah so you just got to seek some help Everybody should seek some help if they feel that even starting. For sure. Yeah. And it's days like today, when you can actually come to the museum and see some wonderful things like this, it's one of those days where you can get out to you know, smell the oil, can't you? It's just, it's just wonderful to actually just, to, to kick back and relax and enjoy yourself for a change too. Well, to be around these cars like this, it's just fabulous, you know. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's cars that, you know, you dream of seeing, you know, so it's not sure. just... Uh, and a lot of these cars are actually out of your average person's hands. Yeah, so to be able right. to actually go and see them in one place is truly really amazing. Can I ask a question then? Does it, do they get driven regularly or does you know they get exercised? Oh, th they do get circulated a little bit. Some of them, not all of them. They do yeah, get okay. circulated a little bit, yeah. but they are for sale. Oh, so yeah, so everything's for sale. Everything's for sale. Every, every car you see is for sale. Better, so. better see if we can get that Pets Lotto ticket <laughs> up. <laughs> Mr John, thank you very, very much thank for you, talking mate. to me. I thank really you. appreciate it's been, it. It's been a pleasure. It's been really privileged to be here.